If you're a Destiny player, a question you're often asked is, is Destiny 2 worth playing? This video aims to answer the following questions. Is Destiny 2 worth playing? How do I gear up my account? What is sunsetting? And how can I prepare for it? Starting off with the first question, the short answer is yes. But the in-depth answer depends on what kind of player you are. Are you casual? Hardcore? A PvE-centric player? A PvP-centric player? Do you play all aspects of the game? Or are you into lore? You see, Destiny attracts all kinds of different players for different reasons. Right now the game is in a transition point while implementing a system called Gear Sunsetting. Here's a basic look at how the system works. Each season, the maximum power level raises. Previously, you'd be able to infuse gear to upgrade it to maximum power. Now you cannot infuse gear if it is three seasons old. This creates the following pros and cons. Pros. Prevents power creep which is when new weapons need to be more and more powerful to be desirable to players. It allows devs to more easily curate gear balance to fit new activities. Cons. Ruins incentive for completing old activities for old gear. Potentially makes grinding for hyper-specific gear a waste of time. Puts casuals on a loot treadmill where by the time they achieve a competitive build, that build will be sunset. Forces regrinding for gear you've already acquired. Exploring fun endgame builds costs too much material to maintain. Any old overpowered gear remains in non-power level enabled PvP forever. Depending on who you're asking, the pros might outweigh the cons and vice versa. These are my personal taste. I describe myself as a hyper hardcore PvP centric player. I spend the majority of my playtime acquiring perfect builds, investing in fun endgame builds, and practicing new PvP strats. Instead of playing the game as I normally would, here's how my approach changes with sunsetting. I no longer attempt to acquire the best in slot gear, I log on weekly to try new content, similar to the way you'd check out a TV show or an anime's new season. Instead of creating multiple endgame builds, I create a neutral universal build that lasts three seasons at a time. Ultimately, this approach allows me to maximize my playtime, so I experience more of the good parts of Destiny and less of the boring. While the game no longer appeals to my taste, the sunsetting decision may bring a bigger, more satisfied population, which can benefit the game. Ideally, more happy paying customers means potentially better content to experience. Although I'm not 100% hopeful, but we'll wait and see. With all this background now, I can better answer the question, is Destiny worth playing? The main selling points of this season is the new PvE dungeon, and the fact that skill-based matchmaking is removed in PvP, and both of these aspects are free. As for paid content, you would get access to the Prismatic Recaster, which helps counter some of the cons of sunsetting. The Recaster allows for curbing RNG by limiting your loot pool, thus allowing you to get the gear you want faster. Right now, the game is $34 on Steam, but is $50 normally. Keep in mind, there is a lot of content for free, like the new dungeon. So try it out and only buy it when you know you like the game. I view this season as a catch-up season, which allows for easy preparation for the next year of content. So this begs the question, how can I gear up and prepare for sunsetting? Step 1. Unlock the recaster through story quest and upgrade to Umbral Mastery 1 and Umbral Discovery 1. You do this so you earn free engrams and materials when doing normal activities. Buy recaster mods every day when possible. Step 2. Up your power level. You accomplish this through viewing the map director, which guides you to activities that give gear to increase your power level. Use the season pass to guarantee certain pieces of gear. So for example, if you're missing gauntlets, you can acquire gauntlets from the season pass to bump up your overall power level. Step 3. At around 1030 to 1040 power level, consider doing the dungeon. It is so much fun. But keep in mind, you can target farm snipers or armor if you do not complete the whole thing. I'll link a guide in the description if I find a good one. The short description is that since certain encounters drop certain rewards, you can repeatedly do the same encounter to limit your loot pool. Step 4. Build a PvE arsenal that survives a whole year. Your goal is to acquire gear with a cap of 1360 power. For kinetic exotics, you want Outbreak Perfected, Malfeasance, Wither Horde, Izanagi's Burden, and Chaperone. The reason you want each of these is Outbreak Perfected stacks more damage the more you shoot it. So if you have three of them, you can ramp up your damage very high even if you have a low power level. In the same way, Malfeasance does bonus damage on the fifth shot 
and hurts taken enemies. So if you're a low power level, Malfeasance guarantees that when you use three of them, you can punch way out of your weight class. Wither Horde is a grenade launcher that gives damage over time. So for certain activities, that's very valuable. Izanagi's Burden is maybe the best burst damage in the game, and Chaperone is a very long range slug shotgun. It's also very great in PvP, so it's worth picking up some of these because they perform double duty in both. As for where to obtain these weapons, Outbreak Perfected can be acquired from the Zero Hour Dungeon, Malfeasance is a Gambit questline, Wither Horde is a Season Pass weapon from Season 11, that's the current season, Izanagi's Burden is a questline, and Chaperone is a questline. So look up on YouTube, I guess, any of these weapons name, followed by Guide, and you'll be on your way. Now for Energy Exotics, I recommend Ariana's Vow, Divinity, Trinity Ghoul, Devil's Ruin, Borealis, and Wrist Runner. Starting off with Ariana's Vow, this has inherent armor-piercing rounds, which are very useful for dealing with certain champions, that's a special variant of enemy, in Master Nightfalls. In the same way, Divinity and Devil's Ruin are also good because Divinity gives overload rounds and Devil's Ruin gives unstoppable rounds. You can obtain the Ariana's Vow from the Cryptarch and Devil's Ruin from a short questline or from the Cryptarch. I don't remember 100%, but just look up the guide if you're confused. Divinity is obtained from the Garden of Salvation raid. It's a raid-related quest, and it's fantastic. It's a trace rifle that creates this ball of energy, and if you shoot at the ball of energy, you do significantly more damage to the boss. So in most raid encounters, having a Divinity is standard. The next weapon to look out for is Trinity Ghoul. This one is a random world drop, so you can't guarantee it, but once you have it, you know you have something solid. Once you acquire the Catalyst for this weapon, which also randomly drops, it turns into a completely different monster. Its perk is if you get a kill with the arrow, it'll load a special arc arrow into it that chains lightning. But the thing is with the Catalyst, any arc kill, including the special arrow, will reproc the perk. So... That's pretty significant. The next one to talk about is Devil's Ruin. This is a sidearm that fires like a normal sidearm when you tap it, but if you hold down the fire button, it charges a laser, thus giving it the unstoppable round laser. So ideally between Ariana's Vow, Divinity, and Devil's Ruin, you will be able to tackle any Master Nightfall, and that's why I would recommend prioritizing these. In the same way, Borealis can change itself to meet any element. It can be arc, it can be solar, or it can be void. So no matter what element you need to tackle in a nightfall or raid or something, Borealis can do it. For the final recommendation is Risk Runner. You can get this from a beginner questline. I'd again look it up on YouTube if you're confused. Risk Runner is a submachine gun that if you get hit by any arc damage, it powers up and basically has infinite ammo and chains lightning to things. It's crazy. For heavy exotics, I recommend Anarchy, Xenophage, Tractor Cannon, and that's pretty much it. Anarchy you get from the Scourge of the Pass raid, and it's not guaranteed by any means. I think you have to do a maximum of 20 to start getting in the ballpark of guaranteed, but I would recommend just doing Scourge anyway, because Anarchy is that good. If you plan on investing a lot of time in the Destiny, Anarchy will always be relevant. Xenophage, on the other hand, is like a better version of Whisper of the Worm that's an exotic high-impact sniper rifle that goes in the heavy slot. Xenophage is a explosive machine gun that has a similar damage output. So if you're going to go for one or the other, go for Xenophage. They're also both solar weapons. Tractor Cannon is a heavy shotgun that adds a debuff and also has a knockback effect. So if you hit something with Tractor Cannon, you do more damage overall. Now for kinetic legendary weapons, you can go with any pulse, any scout, any auto, or any sidearm. In PvE, it's not going to matter too much. The only two bow options you have is the Whispering Slab and the Accrued Redemption. So if you plan to do any Garden of Salvation, which I strongly recommend, you'll probably end up using the Accrued Redemption. Now moving on to energy legendary weapons, the first one I recommend is a Void Auto Rifle called the Gnawing Hunger, and it is obtained from the Prismatic Recaster. The next weapon is a solar bow obtained from the Last Wish. This is a raid, by the way. You'll probably end up doing a lot of Garden of Salvation raid and a lot of Last Wish raid. The Tyranny of Heaven is a bow and can get some pretty good PvE perks. The next weapon to recommend is the Orwings Maul or Truth Teller. Truth Teller is a random world drop and Orwings Maul is an Iron Banner drop. Power level 
is enabled in Iron Banner and it's a PvP mode, so this might not be too appealing to people. But I do recommend going for it because it is a really strong PvE option because the grenades can either do a lot of damage or they can blind or concuss enemies, which gives you a lot of flexibility in PvE. The final weapon I'm recommending is the Nation of Beasts. That's an arc hand cannon from The Last Wish. And again, if you're doing these raids anyway, you might as well know what to keep your eye out for. In the heavy slot, the legendary weapons you're looking for is the Falling Guillotine, which is a sword obtainable from the Season Pass, and it's overpowered, I would say. The next thing is just start getting heavy weapons of different elements. It really doesn't matter which heavy weapon you have, because chances are an exotic will do most of the work. You just want the element to break shields so you can have more flexibility within your team. I recommend the Bad Omens Void Rocket from the Prismatic Recaster, Outrageous Fortune, which is a world drop, Who Scout or Shining Spear, that's either an Iron Banner Rocket or a Dungeon Rocket, and Behringer's Memory or Swarm of the Raven. Swarm is an Iron Banner drop and Behringer's Memory is a world drop. So just keep your eye out for these. This will give you a lot of flexibility within all your loadouts. Pretty much, if you've acquired this entire list, you can handle any piece of content, any activity that pops up in the next year, no questions. Some of you might be questioning why I'm including raid gear in a beginner-centric guide. That's because the raid is the best bang for your buck in terms of gearing up your character and preventing the negative effects of sunsetting. I also think that the raids have been out long enough that most people know what they're doing and guides are easily accessible. The only true argument here is that it's inconvenient to get six people together. For that, I say you could always just do the Last Wish chest farm. I have a video in the description that goes through a 24 minute reset of me and a friend grabbing six raid chests for little to no work. With that being said, let's move on to step five, which is deciding on your weekly reset goals. For me, I prioritize raids and quick Master Nightfalls. Raids give the most versatile armor in the game, as I just discussed, and Master Nightfalls give exotic armor and upgrade materials. When I say a quick Master Nightfall, know that Nightfalls are on a weekly rotation. One week you might get a very difficult Nightfall that takes forever, and another week you might get a quick and easy one. If you get a quick and easy one, I recommend farming it as much as you can to stock up on upgrade materials to use in future seasons. Step number six. Create an armor build. If you play PvP, consider neutral exotics that work in both PvE and PvP. Reference tier lists for each class. I might link the data one in the description, but I also might do these on stream for fun. Let me know if that's something you're interested in, and you might notice that in future weeks I'll re-update this video to include my own tier list. For now though, my overall recommendations are the following from greatest to least. Keep in mind these trend with versatility and or strength. And being the lowest on the list does not mean it's bad. That means it's the worst of the best. For Hunter, I recommend Dragon Shadow as the first pick. This is an exotic where if you dodge, it automatically reloads your weapon, automatically refills your melee if you're close, gives you a movement speed bonus and a reload speed bonus. Again, I reiterate, all for dodging. The next recommendation is the Celestial Nighthawk, which turns your golden gun from a three shooter or a six shooter into a single high damage shot thus allowing you to have very high damage per second, which will make completing raids and whatnot a lot easier, which will help gear up your character in the long term a lot better. Assassin's Cowl is an exotic where if you use a finisher, it makes you invisible and restores some health, which is very useful in endgame activities where you're constantly damaged and need that second to get some health back and go invisible. Six Coyote allows you to have two dodge abilities, which means that you can chain invisibility dodges for longer. In the same way, Frosties refill your grenade, melee, and dodge ability just for sprinting. So with certain builds with Frosty, you can go perpetually invisible forever. Now for Warlock, I recommend Transversive Steps. These are a speed boot that reloads your weapon for sprinting for a couple seconds. Luna Faction Boots change your empowering rift to increase the range of your weapon. This is super useful for loadout flexibility in PvE, and also standing in the rift increases your reload speed. In the same way, Ophidian Aspects increase your weapon handling and your reload speed. The final option is Controverse Hold, which isn't very good unless the seasonal artifact buffs your Void Grenades. So the Controverse Hold buffs your Void Grenades. For Titan, I recommend Heart of Inmost Light, which is an exotic that using your Barricade empowers, or makes more powerful, your Grenade and Melee ability, and 
it makes the cooldown of those a lot faster. Dune Marchers are an exotic where if you sprint for a couple seconds, it will allow you to do a lightning chaining punch. Helma Saint-14 is a helmet where if you throw a bubble, it gives you an overshield in addition to the damage buff. For Syntheseps, that is a melee-centric exotic armor piece where if you're surrounded by enemies, you get increased melee damage and super damage, and you get increased melee distance. Armamentarium is pretty simple. It allows you to have an extra grenade, but with certain builds, that's a very powerful exotic. Actium War Rig automatically reloads your auto rifles, and since Xenophage is such a strong universal exotic, you can run an auto rifle like Gnawing Hunger and a Xenophage, and Actium War Rig will reload both of them. The final one is my favorite, believe it or not, and this is Lion Ramparts. These give you an extra jump on the Titan, so you can chain a sword swipe and jumping to stay in the air almost perpetually. For generic recommendations, go for high recovery on all your classes with armor, but keep in mind that high mobility on hunters is also very valuable because your class ability is tied to mobility on hunters, resilience on titans, and recovery on warlocks. Last Wish armor is ideal for the perk called Taken Armaments, which makes it so that if you get a grenade kill on a Taken enemy, it refills some heavy ammo. And Fallen Armaments does the same thing, but for Fallen enemies. Guardian of Salvation Armor is ideal for Hive Armaments. You guessed it. Use a grenade on a Hive enemy. You get some power ammo, some heavy ammo. And Powerful Friends, which is ultimately just used because it's a free plus 20 mobility for only a couple perk points on your armor. You can fill in the gaps by using the Season Pass Armor or by also target farming the dungeon or Trials of Osiris. Iron Banner is also worth considering, but if you are a low power level, you should tread carefully. My low power Iron Banner recommendation is to use high rate of fire weapons and play for zone capture and denial instead of just going for kills normally. So overall, if you followed this entire guide up until now, you should have an entire PvE arsenal and an armor set that will survive sunsetting, enabling you to experience content right when it drops, and enjoy it and revisit the game every week to see what's new in the world of Destiny. So if you have any friends who are asking you if they should get into Destiny or why you're enjoying Destiny and so forth, this might be a very good video to recommend to them. I'll end the video by recommending a couple PvP-centric loadouts that should last you most of the year. Keep in mind, at some point, weapons like Astro Horizon and Felwinter's Lie will need to be upgraded. So it's best to get things that you can consistently use throughout the entire year. Keep in mind, exotic weapons are not getting sunset, so the main bread and butter things you should get used to are exotic weapons. Now, starting from the top with legendary sniper rifles, I recommend the Kinetic, the Supremacy, from The Last Wish. The Supremacy is a rapid-fire sniper rifle, and the perk I recommend on it is Snapshot. For the energy slot, you have two options. You have the Omniscient Eye from the Garden of Salvation, which I do recommend Snapshot again, or the Widow's Bite from the new dungeon. I recommend Firmly Planted and Opening Shot, or Firmly Planted and Quick Draw. For exotic sniper rifles, you can't go wrong with Izanagi's Burden or Borealis. Izanagi's Burden can consume bullets to body shot people in PvP, and Borealis is an aggressive frame sniper, but with adaptive stats. So it punches way out of its weight class in the aim assist department. For shotguns, you have Astral Horizon from Trials and Felwinter's Lie from the previous season. If you don't have either of these, you might struggle to find an equivalent shotgun. The 7th Seraph shotgun from the Prismatic Recaster is a pretty decent option, but since that's a gun that existed last season, you might have to upgrade it sooner than later. For exotic options, you can't really go wrong with the Chaperone. I would argue Chaperone is the best shotgun in the game, and the legendary energy weapon you'd probably want to pair with it is the Last Wish hand cannon, the Nation of Beasts. You can go for a PvP rule. For me, I've been using opening shot in either explosive rounds or kill clip. For the rest of the weapons, you can't go wrong with the exotic kinetic hand cannons, the ace of spades, last word, or thorn, all of which are easily accessible through quests. Again, just search up on YouTube, insert weapon here, and guide, and you'll probably find it. Other weapons I find a lot of success with are the wish ender bow, which allows you to see through walls, the bastion, which is a kinetic fusion, fighting lion, which is an energy primary grenade launcher, Polaris Lance, which is a questline-related scout rifle that has an explosive fourth shot. 
Risk Runner, which I already talked about, but can counter things like Trinity Ghoul, and it's always nice to have in your back pocket, and Telesto, which is a fusion rifle that sets proximity bolts and has no damage drop-off. For the power weapons now, you can go with pretty much any sword or any rocket launcher or any grenade launcher and you'll do just fine. For the exotics, Black Talon is a sword with a ranged attack. A Thousand Voices is a last wish exotic reward that shoots like an explosive charge up attack. The colony shoots homing spiders. Wardcliffe Coil shoots a bunch of drunken missiles that can counter most supers. Thunderlord is a machine gun that has a firefly effect after holding down the trigger. Tractor Cannon cancels supers. Twin-Tailed Fox I just like because it also cancels supers. And believe it or not, I like Whisper of the Worm because sniping and PvP can be very effective, borderline overpowered, and having both a shotgun, a sniper, and a hand cannon in the same loadout can prove to be very useful. If your goal is to play endgame PvP like Trials of Osiris, you might consider specking into high intellect on your armor so that you can get a super before your opponent gets a super. And now, with that being said, that concludes the whole guide. Please list any tips you have in the comment section below to help your fellow Destiny players. And again, if you find this guide useful, please recommend it to your friends.